year 10 and 11, welcome to your third part of an analysis of Lord of the Flies and this shall analyse chapters 10 to 12 with additional notes on character. This is the third video, make sure you have watched the first two which detail chapters 1 to 4 and chapters 5 to 9. Chapter 10. Sam, Eric, Piggy and Ralph discuss events and feel guilty. Jack and the hunters set up camp at the end of the island. Ralph, Piggy and the twins try to relight the fire but are unsuccessful. Roger admires the rock and the lever Jack uses to prevent unwanted visitors. They hear noises that night. Jack and two hunters attack Piggy and steal his glasses. Jack is delighted at what he has done. Quote, he was a chief now in truth. The importance of the chapter. We see discussions about Simon's death. Piggy insists Simon's death was an accident. Jack is chief and seems to have power. An unrestrained power. Jack punishes Wilfred for reasons unknown and shows his tyrant, authoritarian leadership style. Golding shows the difference between earlier meetings when all were equal, equal to now when Jack is set apart from everyone else. Roger refers to him as a proper chief. The hunters will use violence to get what they want and need, i.e. Piggy's glasses. The power has shifted to Jack and his hunters and Ralph is left an outcast. As order has diminished, so has Ralph's power and influence. As Jack's power reaches its high point, the figures of the beast and the lord of the flies attain their prominence. Ralph's loss of power is linked to the symbols in the novel, the conch shell and piggy's glasses, because they lose their importance. Ralph is seen clinging to the conch, a representation of him also clinging onto civilization. Piggy's glasses are Jack's new method of control. To make fire emphasises his power over the island and the demise of of the boy's hopes of being rescued. We learn about the different boys' characters through their reaction to Simon's death. Piggy finds it impossible to accept any guilt for what happened. Ralph refuses to accept Piggy's argument that Simon's death was accidental and insists that the death was murder. Jack continues to use the boy's fear of the beast to enhance his own power. He claims that Simon really was the beast. Jack argues that cruelty and savagery is an acceptable way to function in the world. The boys are convinced and this again represents how far removed the boys are from civilised behaviour. And Jack can manipulate them even more. The groups. Civilization versus savagery. Quote. Which is better? To have rules and agree or to hunt and kill? The conch group, the group representing civilization, appear hopeless following Simon's murder. They cannot accept responsibility. Quote, we were very tired. Where Jack's group state, how could we kill it? Accepting their role. Jack announces that they didn't kill it and that is that. The two groups once again represent civilization and savagery. Jack's group never acknowledged Simon's name but referred to him as the beast who came disguised. The conch group accept what happened but don't take responsibility for their actions. 
Jack's group accept the killing, but the conch group deny that it was a person in the middle of the circle. The glasses and the conch are both important symbols. The shell represents democracy. The glasses are needed by Piggy, but have an additional role, lighting the fire. This idea sets humans apart from animals, the ability to make fire. The glasses therefore symbolise not only fire, but also knowledge, enlightenment and a mastery over primal instinct. But interestingly, Piggy views the conch as more important and treats it with great respect. Jack as a dictator. In the dictatorships of the 1930s and 40s, there were leaders such as Hitler, Joseph Stalin and Mussolini. Jack is referred to as the chief and the boys are called the tribe or the savages. Much like the people led by Hitler, Stalin and Mussolini who were seen as faceless, they had no identity or individuality and they followed strict rules. Jack is likened to these leaders. Chapter 11 Ralph cannot light the fire without Piggy's glasses. The conch group confront Jack and the hunters and a fight breaks out. Roger leans on the lever which catapults a rock towards Piggy and Piggy is killed. The conch is also destroyed. The hunters capture Sam and Eric and the hunters also throw spears at Ralph who is forced to escape. The importance of the chapter. Sam and Eric are forced to join Jack through violence. Ralph thinks he can approach Jack in a civilised manner. Both Piggy and the Conch are destroyed and this represents the destruction of order, civilization, and the voice of reason. Ralph is now alone. Jack and his use of savagery and the hunt have worn out over peaceful civilization. The death of Piggy. The death of the pigs is linked to the death of Piggy. Coat, arms and legs twitched a bit like a pig's after it has been killed. And this is similar to how the pig's death is described in chapter 8. Earlier in the novel, Piggy was a source of mockery, but after his death, there is no more humour. Piggy symbolises civilization, logic, the adult's viewpoint and clear-sidedness. Violence. Golden uses his teaching experience here. Initially, the boys wanted to play. But play is often a preparation for something else, i.e. play fighting. Roger throws stones and this becomes dangerous. Jack's dominance in the game is now evil. Quote, there isn't a tribe for you anymore. Also, the conch is gone. Childhood innocence has been lost and replaced. We are told that when Jack throws his spear at Ralph, it is viciously with full intention. Chapter 12 Ralph avoids danger and tries to hide. He comes across the pig's head and destroys it. He goes to speak to Sam and Eric and we realise how alone Ralph is. Jack and the hunters hunt, hunt Ralph like an animal. Jack sets a lot of the island on fire to smoke out Ralph and a ship sees the smoke. 
Ralph collapses on the beach and a naval officer is there. The importance. Ralph had thought the signal fire which represented civilization would save the boys. And ironically, the fire that catches the attention of a ship is not ordered and controlled, but the haphazard forest fire that Jack Hunt has set when they're trying to kill Ralph. Ralph has strived to retain the structure of civilization and help the boys be rescued. Now, when all he can do is struggle to stay alive, I'm never going to pronounce this because I wasn't very good at languages at school, so have a look at that. And in brackets, it's an improbable or unexpected device or character that suddenly appears to resolve a situation. Note that down for your analysis anyway. Appears a naval officer who brings the boys back to the world of law, order and society. Goldine's use of irony in the last chapter blurs the boundary between civilization and savagery and implies that the two are more, more closely connected than the novel suggests. The boy's savagery brings about the rescue that their coordinated and purposeful efforts were unable to achieve. Irony is shown when the naval officers question how British boys could act in this way when he himself is part of an adult world where violence and war are linked to civilization and social order. He reacts to the savage children with disgust, which is hypocritical. The children are shocked by the officer's presence and are now so far removed from the world that they do not celebrate his arrival and their own safety. Even Ralph, who has been saved, whose life has been saved, that should say, by the presence of the ship, weeps tears of grief rather than joy. Because he realises that nothing can ever be as it was before coming to the island of the Lord of the Flies. The naval officer claims, what have you been doing Having a war or something. Therein lies the irony and the hypocrisy. Roger and the Savages. Roger is prepared to kill and behead Ralph and place his head on a stick. This is why the stick is sharpened at both ends. Sam and Derek call him a terror. They make a lever and place a rock on the cliff top, and when it falls, they cheer. They have lost all sense of humanity. They set the forest fire under Jack's orders. They don't realise that fruit is being burned, food that could be used, another link to their savagery. Key quotation. Ralph wept for the end of innocence, the darkness of man's heart, and the fall through the air of a true wise friend called Piggy. Ralph's realisation that he will be saved forces him to despair. The rescue is not a moment of joy, for Ralph understands that things will never be the same. He has learned about evil and how it's present within human beings. He has lost his innocence. Ralph's despair is linked to the two main Themes in the novel, savagery within, within all human beings and innocence, civilization. Again, look at that quotation. Ralph wept for the end of innocence, the darkness of man's heart. The fall through the air of a true wise friend called Piggy. Massive quote in terms of the main themes of the novel, which is what is inherently natural within the soul of a human being innocence and darkness there look at those words more information about characters including quotations ralph he's the chief he uses the conch to control meetings he represents order and civilization he is practical and rational he did he does not change as much as the others his role in the novel, 
He blows the conch to summon the other survivors in chapter one. He decides, he decides to build a fire to help the boys get rescued in chapter two. He attempts to build shelter for the younger boys in chapter three. He raises issues to aid survival and rescue in chapter five. He shows courage when exploring a part of the island where the boys think the beast is in chapter six. He is hunted by the savages and saved by the officer in chapter 12. I'm just going to upload now some key quotations about Ralph. Better piggy than fatty. I'm sorry if you feel like that. This shows us that he handles Piggy's feelings in a diplomatic way. Don't forget, throughout the novel, Ralph's opinion of Piggy has changed because at the beginning he's very dismissive of him. Whereas by the end, he's able to apologise to him and realises that the intelligence of Piggy is necessary. Your next quote there is, There was a mildness about his mouth and eyes that proclaimed no evil. So it's this idea that he doesn't have any unhealthy characteristics, that he's gentle and can be trusted. Next quote, they'll see our smoke. Remember, Ralph is the practical one. He spends a lot of his time trying to direct the fire and keep it going in order to try and get them rescued. He plans for the future in terms of building the fire. Quote, a new understanding that Piggy had given him. He actually listens to Piggy's advice and as a reader we know that Piggy is probably the most intelligent. We see his awareness of Piggy's thinking skills and that Piggy's thinking skills are superior and that they have helped him lead in an effective way. Don't you understand, Piggy, the things we did? Ralph is the only one that can come to terms with the reasons why Simon is killed and this shows true leadership. He accepts blame and responsibility for Simon's death. Okay, we're going to move now to Jack. Jack is the leader of the choir boys who become the hunters. He rivals Ralph he declares himself as chief. He is the antagonist, i.e. the villain, I suppose. He represents chaos and savagery. He desires to hunt. His mask links him to savagery and primitive behaviour. For example, the way he impales the sow's head. His role in the novel... In chapter one, he decides the choir will the choir will be the hunters. In chapter two, he snatches Piggy's glasses to make a fire. In chapter four, he kills the pig and organizes the chant and the dance to celebrate its death. In chapter five, we see that he has a disregard for rules. In chapter 8, he runs off when Ralph is re-elected as the chief. And by chapter 11, he is a cruel leader of a tribe. Your key quotations are coming up now. This was the voice of one who knows his own mind. Jack is someone who does not want to obey the rules. He is certain of his own ideas and he will not compromise with others. Next quote is compulsion to track down and kill that was swallowing, swallowing him up. He has an urge to kill. He is presented as a hunter. He's basic, primeval and his instinct is to hunt. Do our dance, come on, dance. He begins the events which lead very quickly to Simon's death. He puts this sequence of events into motion. He turns from hunting pigs to hunting people. Your next quote. 
the mask was a thing on its own behind which Jack hid, liberated from shame and self-consciousness. So when he has the mask on, he, he feels like he can act as he wants. He may, it makes This quote makes the mask sound responsible for his actions as though the mask allows him to hide any responsibility and makes him more evil. Now, don't forget, if you are writing about Jack, that Golden presents him as someone to dislike. He's not only personally unpleasant, but he's not practical. This overwhelming urge to hunt is destructive. There are key moments we might explore in terms of his negative presentation. So, first of all, how he enters in chapter one. It's very dramatic. The way he treats Piggy with his constant dismissal and mockery. The fact that he fails to maintain the fire. The killing of the pigs and, uh, and, and the saw. It could have provided future meat, but... Again, he's not practical. He doesn't think forward. And the fact that they destroy the fruit trees without a second thought. We know that he has compulsion to hunt and he's liberated by it. He's liberated when he puts the mask on. Piggy. He's overweight, concerned about his health, intelligent and does not like manual labour. His role in the novel. He's the first boy to meet Ralph in chapter one. He is the one to suggest that he and Ralph have to do something. He suggests the con should be used to call the others and have a meeting. In chapter 5, he suggests the only fear on the island should be the fear of people. Massive quote. He tells Ralph he will carry the conch to Castle Rock and confront Jack in chapter 11. And he is killed by a giant rock released by Roger, also in chapter 11. Your first quotation there is, he was shorter than the fair boy and very fat. So the physical difference is very clear from the very start and it sets him apart from the other boys and, and shows us why he's an easy target. Next quote. P was an outsider, not only by accent, which did not matter, but by fat and asthma and specs and a certain disinclination for manual labour. So we know he's an outsider immediately and he is loathed and he's bullied by Jack. It shows us that he cannot help them survive. He can't really add much in terms of the manual labour to the boys and their survival attempts. But remember, Piggy is the intelligent one who thinks rationally and has all of the ideas. And don't forget, he also has the glasses that they need to start the fire. We know that he is intelligent, as I said. Them that haven't no common sense shows he's able to see to the heart of the matters. He's clear-sighted, isn't he? He can see what they need to do. We could find out how to make a small hot fire and then put green branches on to make smoke. He can solve problems. He's rational. Thinks. He's logical. He makes suggestions about work and he solves the problems. Simon enters the novel as one of Jack's choir boys and he faints and he's often referred to as strange and he is the one who discovers the truth about the beast. We have his role in the novel is, as I say, he faints as Jack leads the choir along the beach in chapter one. He explores the island with Ralph and Jack also in chapter one. But in chapter three, he goes off alone in the jungle in chapter 4, when Jack won't give any meat to Piggy, he shares his meat. 
And in chapter 8, he communicates with the Lord of the Flies and loses consciousness. In chapter 9, Simon discovers the dead parachutist and is killed when he tries to tell the boys the truth about the beast. In terms of quotations, there's a few one-word quotations there because, as I say, he's seen as strange, batty, queer, funny, cracked, and this is how the boys define him. Simon can't explain the idea of evil. He can't explain it. He can't explain that it's within themselves. And you get, what's the dirtiest thing there is? Although he is intelligent, he doesn't have the language to tell them that the evil exists within themselves. But it, as I say, it is Simon who understands the nature of the beast, i.e. the dead parachutist. And that's a massive quote. The beast was harmless and horrible. Look at your alliteration there. He, he understands there's nothing to fear. And then in chapter 8 we get um, the strength of his mind but the frailty of his body. In Simon's right temple a pulse began to beat on the brain. So we see his perceptiveness and individuality in his mind but we also see how vulnerable he is. And Goldin presents him as always present and Jack describes him as always about in chapter 3. He's loyal. He is the only character who helps Ralph build the shelter. He does spend time alone. And as I said earlier, in my analysis of Simon, he's like the Christ-like figure. He confronts the Lord of the Flies. He is murdered, bringing the truth to the boys. And then you question, if he had lived to tell them would he have destroyed Jack's power? Because then Jack wouldn't have the fear of this to rule. If we move now to Roger and Maurice. So, Roger is Jack's lieutenant, if you like, and he is sadistic. And Maurice is Roger's henchman. So, they're all in the book. They are part of Jack's choir in chapter one. They destroy the Littlands sand castles in chapter four. Roger is concealed by a tree and teases the Littlands by throwing stones in chapter four. Roger is the first person Jack shows the mask to again, chapter four. Roger acts with a sense of delirious abandonment when he brings about Piggy's death in chapter 11. And he has a stick that is sharpened at both ends when the boys hunt Ralph in chapter 12. The quotation's there. You don't know Roger, he's a terror. Massive quote. Roger is the boy who turns to a premeditated killer. He is more barbaric than Jack. He is he's, he's a killer, isn't he? And he's the one who says that Jack is the chief. Look, a short quotation, he's a terror. Next one. Maurice still felt the unease of wrongdoing. So when Roger and Maurice kick sand in Percival's eye, he feels guilty and he retains a sense of sin. He's not quite the same as Roger, who shows no remorse. Roger is the person who gives out all of the torture, isn't he? Roger advanced upon them as one wielding a nameless authority. He enjoys his role and he is supported by Jack, which gives him, I suppose, more sense of power. And as I say, he shows no remorse for the death of Piggy and wants to kill Ralph. Terrors, only Roger. It's easy to underestimate Roger's role in the book. So don't do that. Because we see just how awful he really is and how violent. And his descent into savagery is very clear. Um, Maurice, however, is pretty much unchanged. He's a loyal choir boy and then he becomes a loyal follower of Roger and Jack, really. 
going to move on now to Sam and Eric. So Sam and Eric are twins who do everything together and when they first appear, they are described as boys who breathed together and grinned together. They're all in the novel. They look after the fire but fall asleep and almost let it go out in chapter 6. They believe the parachutist is the beast again in chapter 6. They mention the beast's teeth and claws, its eyes and the way it kind of sat up again chapter 6. They stay with Ralph and are loyal until forced to join Jack's tribe in chapter 11. They are tortured by Roger again chapter 11. And in chapter 12 they warn Ralph about Jack and Roger's intention to kill him. Your quotations then. The twins shook their heads and pointed at each other and the crowd laughed. So straight away we know that nobody can tell them apart and at the beginning there's a little bit of humour about them. The next quote is similar. They are seen as a single unit. By custom now one conch did for both twins for their substantial unity was recognised. And this is um, the story, the retelling of the tale about the beast and I suppose when they both tell it, it adds more fright to it if you like. The twins are very brave when they confront Jack, you let me go, and me. They try to refuse joining his savage tribe, but give in, obviously, when the threat of violence is used. They warn Ralph that he's going to be killed, quote, they're going to hunt you tomorrow. So they remain civilised, but as I say, are made to do what Jack wants. And if you look at language, don't forget, Sam and Eric becomes one word, Sam and Eric, just as the younger boys become the little ones. So language shows us that they are disappearing, I suppose, in terms of their importance. It's symbolic. It's an erosion, if you like, of their importance and their significance. Okay, I hope this video has been useful. Please remember that this is the third video. It's linked onto the other two, obviously. The first video explores chapters one to four, themes and character. The second video explores chapters five to nine. And then obviously this is the last video. I have a tendency to talk fast, so go back through, pause, make your notes. Please get down key quotations. Make sure they are short and something you can remember. I hope this has been useful. If you need any more of my videos, just type my name into YouTube, which is Stacey Ray, S-T-A-C-E-Y, and Ray is R-E-A-Y, and good luck in your English literature exam.